there's more that stand on our side No matter what you see The king who hated his way Was trying to win the war But every move he made It seemed that his way knew before No, it's not a spy inside our camp As men explain one day There's a prophet named Elisha Every word you say They found out where Elisha lived At the young march that night They surrounded all the city By the morning's early light When Elisha's servant rose He saw that army all around And he said, what are we going to do? They're going to cut us down But Elisha told his servant Don't give in to your fears those that are with us are more than all this army here And Elisha prayed that his servant's eyes would have the sight required And he saw God's mighty army with its chariots of fire There's more that stand on our side no matter what you see Doesn't matter how it seems how strong Stand on our side no matter what you see The enemy looked toward the town And Elisha prayed a prayer Lord, strike him all with blindness Let confusion be scared God struck that whole army blind And he brought them to defeat The victory he gave that day Was total and complete There's more than stand on God searched all the earth to find each blameless heart To show his power and faithfulness and to take his children's part And no fear is all around you, don't you dare give in Cause the battle is the Lord's and he's the one who's gonna win But there's more that stand on our side no matter what you see Doesn't matter how it seems, how strong enemy. Don't believe your eyes, believe your father's guarantee. There's more than stand on our side, no matter what you see. Don't believe your eyes, believe your father's guarantee. There's more than stand on our side, no matter what you see. Dear saints, I want to greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord we have another opportunity to be able to go into God's word. Let's bow for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you this morning for this opportunity we have. Lord, to gather together, my God, to know, Father, that you are in control of all things. I pray, Lord, for the saints both locally here and abroad, my Father. Minister to them, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, that you will touch those that are sick, my God. Lord, no matter what their problems are, my Father, I pray that you will minister to them. I pray for your precious wear, dear God. I pray, Lord, that you will be the one that will inspire our hearts. Uh, and let something be said that will be beneficial to your children, my God. I pray for those, Lord, abroad as well. Be with them, guide them, and lead them at this hour of time. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated. We want to thank the Lord once again, brothers and sisters, that we have this opportunity to be in the presence of God. We uh, are looking uh, into what is happening presently in the Middle East, uh, as well as uh, the scriptures that God has placed in his word. Uh, last week, my brothers and sisters, uh, we talked about how God uh, was going to be able to help the children of Israel in their hour of desperation. This morning, we are looking at the title, 
the miraculous war ahead will cause Israel to dwell safely. The miraculous war ahead will cause Israel to dwell safely. Now, my brothers and sisters, we realize that the religious world has uh, wanted to take the scriptures that are contained in God's word and try and see what is happening in the world today. Some of them are looking at it, well, this could be the war that is spoken about in Ezekiel 38 and 39. It could be Armageddon. Others, uh, you know, relate to Psalm 83. And uh, they have a mixture of lines of thoughts. Now, my brothers and sisters, we are very thankful as children of God living at this hour that God has uh, opened our scriptures through an apostle in this hour of time that at least uh, gave us a head start so that when these events are transpiring, we can be able to see what is going on ground and really see how the scriptures, uh, the pieces are coming together. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, last week I talked about uh, our brother Jackson in one of his messages uh, talked about uh, a massacre that will be a catalyst to how we will slowly enter into that era of the miraculous. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, you know, uh, I remembered Brother Jackson had talked about this, but uh, I didn't know where and I'd forgotten about it. But that particular day, I was listening to the tape and lo and behold, uh, I was just uh, shocked that those words were coming out of the tape. So this morning, I, I'm going to give you the text because I had a few uh, individuals that wanted to uh, find out where this is. So um, we'll just read the text. This is Brother Jackson. He preached this message in 13 July 1997, when God makes himself known, tape one. And uh, somewhere in the 54th or 55th minute into the message, uh, you will see him talk. And it says, and it would not surprise me, brothers and sisters, I have got a very uneasy feeling. When the time does come and it is right in the plan of God, God is going to allow some of these Arabs to pull some kind of a sneak attack and literally massacre an element of Jews some way for a definite reason. The Arabs are going to say, we will do this to put fear into them. We will let them know who's boss. But little do they realize that when they are allowed to do such a thing, the end result is not going to put fear in. It's just literally going to absolutely cause the Jewish people to suddenly wake up their mind, realize, look, every time we try to do a little something and go along, and this peace process and negotiate, we get the bitter end of it. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, these are just uh, words. We know it's not scripture, but it is uh, so, uh, I would say, prophetic for this hour of time that we live in. Almost uh, going past a month now, my brothers, since October 7th, we realize uh, there are so many lines of thoughts now that... Uh, you know, our minds are full to where you want to start and where you want to end the message. But nonetheless, uh, yesterday, MBS, brothers and sisters, uh, this is uh, the man that's in Saudi Arabia, the crown prince. He called four brothers and sisters a Arab summit. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he wants uh, Israel uh, to have a ceasefire. And my brothers and sisters uh, also, uh, they want the hostages to be returned. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, if God did not allow something to have happened, and someone will say, well, look, uh, you know, how do you know God allowed it? Well, we just read, brothers and sisters, what Brother Jackson had said in 1997, something that is almost um, probably 26 years ago. Brothers and sisters, uh, so God knows nothing takes him by surprise. So they are now stating, my brothers and sisters, uh, they want uh, a ceasefire. 
And uh, we know the first few days since October 7th, brothers and sisters, uh, in those first few days, everybody was running to Israel. And my brothers and sisters saying, we are with you, you know, we can see what has happened, the massacre has taken place. But people have a short memory. Brothers and sisters, uh, and we are beginning to see a shift. My brothers and sisters, and slowly uh, they are coming against the nation of Israel. And we know the scripture says in Isaiah 63, that uh, no one was with the Lord and with Israel. So we see as this events move on, there's going to be very few people and finally the world is going to turn against Israel. So that picture is in front of us. And we know these are the stepping stones uh, to brothers and sisters, uh, that era of the miraculous. Uh, no, we don't have a, a date or a time, but we are no doubt uh, entering into the introduction, brothers and sisters, uh, where there have to be certain players on ground. We know the Hezbollah has not come in. We know that perhaps, uh, the surrounding Arab nations are just holding fire. But we know Hamas has started something. And my brothers, uh, the temperature is growing. And uh, therefore they had to hold uh, this uh, Arab summit. My brothers and sisters, they had it in a very plush place in Saudi Arabia. But we know in the scriptures, it has been spoken in Zechariah chapter 12 that uh, Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling. It will become a very nervous place. And we know that has happen, happened uh, over the past uh, years. Since 1948, brothers and sisters, there's been wars and rumors of wars, but Jerusalem was not the centerpiece. But slowly, my brothers, uh, it's going to shift from Gaza to Jerusalem and uh, they'll want the West Bank and uh, Gaza to be given over to the PLO. So uh, we see God spoke about this uh, in Zechariah chapter 12 and verses 2, that Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling. And also Jerusalem uh, will be a burdensome stone. Brothers and sisters, uh, why uh, is there a shift away from Israel? Because this this negotiation and this stone that the politicians are carrying are becoming heavy and burdensome stone. That is why, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we see Blinken, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, is trying to shift his thoughts uh, progressively because he can't carry this weight to negotiate through all these different Arab people and still say he's siding with Israel. So uh, initially, he stated Israel will never be alone. My brothers and sisters, uh, because almost 67% of the citizens of the United States uh, are for Israel. But my brothers and sisters, uh, so Tony Blinken coming out of that administration has to state these words, uh, Israel will never be alone. But scriptures uh, tell us it'll, it's going to be different. The yoke is going to be broken. So now with this Arab summit and what has gone on, my brothers and sisters, in the UN, we will realize in the coming weeks, brothers, uh, the shift is going to be seen greater and greater as there's going to be more killing in Gaza. There's going to be more atrocities that they're going to blame Israel for. And they're going to say, look here, we want you to hold fire. We don't want you to go any further. So that is why we see, brothers, this is going to change. And he's running about. It's becoming a very burdensome stone to him. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we see even uh, France, Macron, when he went initially to see Netanyahu, brothers and sisters, he stated, uh, no, we'll send a, a force in there. To, to be able to stabilize situation. But yesterday he's talking another story. He said that Israel mustn't kill babies. My brothers and sisters, so we see how quickly people forget. My brothers and sisters, uh, uh, Pharaoh was the same way. When he saw the miracles, he said, okay, take your people and go. But after a while his heart got hardened and he said, no, you're not going. 
brothers and sisters, and we're going to see more of this happen in the coming weeks. So because uh, in Zechariah 12.3, this is becoming a very burdensome situation to, to sort out. And so we realize, brothers and sisters, that that burdensome stone, my brothers and sisters, uh, is going to get heavier and heavier as uh, we move in. That's finally, brothers and sisters, uh, leading uh, to this hour of the miraculous. Even my brothers and sisters, uh, the uh, General Secretary of the UN, Guterres, brothers and sisters, is changing his thought all the time. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, this is why it's becoming difficult for the religious world to be able to see uh, how do we see this picture. Once again, we thank God, brothers, that in our time God anointed a man to give us a picture by a dream that he gave him. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and we know there was a key verse that uh, is contained in Ezekiel chapter 38. Three times in that chapter, 38, uh, 11, and I think uh, 38, uh, 8, and 38, 14, it says when Israel dwells safely, that's when Russia is going to come. Now we know the next war, or supernatural or miraculous war, is not Ezekiel 38 and 39. Brothers, that's another miraculous war, but... It's when Israel is dwelling safely. So that is a key verse or a key word to put this picture together. And if the religious world and all these uh, uh, individuals like Amir, which is a very good man, had looked into that, they would have seen there has to be a war of supernatural content that will cause Israel to be secure and safe. And my brothers, since 1948, Israel has never dwelt safely. 48, 67, 73, brothers, all the others, and up till this moment, Israel is not dwelling safely. So, from this war in Gaza, something is going to take place of a supernatural nature, when Daniel 12 is going to come into effect, because just bombs is not going to put fear into the Arab nations and tell them that Elohim is the God. That spirit, that Islamic spirit is only going to be broken by a supernatural anointing on the battlefront. And when it is over, every dog, in as it, I'm quoting a scripture from uh, uh, the in Exodus, it never wagged its tongue. My brothers and sisters, uh, there was silence because they saw the supernatural impact that took place. And my brothers and sisters, we have to realize our hearts go out to every individual that is seeing these atrocities, be it uh, outside babies, uh, you know, uh, women. Uh, pregnant women, but we've got to understand that there is a time of God's patience and there is a time when you start seeing God's anger. And my brothers, no matter what Israel wants to do to contain it, the Bible tells us in Zephaniah chapter 2, now is the time to seek the face of the Lord, that you could be hid in the time of God's anger. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we have to understand that we are living right in this hour of time. We are seeing the introduction, my brothers and sisters, the stepping stones, uh, the build-up. We are on that brink of that era of the miraculous that God is going to allow the world to put their hands on their mouth and be silent. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that is why no matter what the UN is going to say, what MBS is going to say, Brothers and sisters from Saudi Arabia, what Iran is going to say, brothers and sisters, none of these nations are going to be able to stop the hand of God. The Bible says, by the hand of Israel, my people, brothers, his vengeance is going to be seen. So we see, brothers, uh, all these men are now shifting their attitudes 
Because the Bible says, when the whole world is against Israel, God will cut them to pieces. So we see, brothers and sisters, the world is blaming Israel. But you know, here's a nation, Qatar. Brothers and sisters, they're one of the richest nations in the world. They got all the money. They house Hamas. These men live in plush hotels. Brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, they are paid out uh, by the suitcases uh, in dollars. And my brothers, some of them are billionaires. Qatar has the money to speak to these leaders there and say, you know what? We're getting a bad name. Release these hostages. No, but they won't do it. My brothers, they will go by releasing one year and one day and one day and want to extend this so that uh, this uh, terrorist, uh, I would say, individuals can be set free. My brothers and sisters, uh, we see the Egypt. She's got the Rafa crossing. She could have opened that. All of these individuals could have had a freedom to go into the Sinai if they wanted to. Just as what happened in Ukraine, we saw the pictures. Bus loads were, and nations took the individuals. No, they want to lock it up. And my brothers uh, put all the blame on Israel. And my brothers and sisters, they will be playing in the hands of God because he's the final judge. And my brothers and sisters, uh, I was reading that Israel uh, spoke to the Egyptians and told them, the government, we will write off your debt. Open the Rafa crossing. They agreed. But when it was done, they just opened 400 and 700 people to go. That is why we are having all these problems right at that crossing. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we have to realize uh, that Qatar is uh, an oil-rich nation, gas-rich nation. They got the money. They can stop this. They house uh, these individuals of Hamas, but they won't do it. Look at that place. Brothers and sisters, they live in paradise. These Hamas leaders are maybe in these hotels. That's where they spend their time. My brothers and sisters, Israel is going to be placed in a corner in the ensuing months because the world is going to change their attitude because of what they see on ground. But they have locked I would say Israel up to a certain point. Now my brothers and sisters, that is why I read the opening uh, text from Brother Jackson. That he looked and he seen that my brothers and sisters, there's going to come a catalyst that is going to change the mindset of the government leadership and the people of Israel. And when blood is dropped, and when there's a massacre, brothers and sisters, look at today. Every leader that has gone to Israel has said since October 7th, Israel is not the same. They have gone into another mode altogether. And my brothers, their soldiers are there. They're being restricted to a certain point. But uh, in another tape, Brother Jackson had said, the first thing Israel will do, they will go into Gaza and they will lock Gaza up. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and they will start dealing with brothers and sisters, uh, the enemy there. Because remember, it's pointless for Israel to negotiate a settlement. It will go on and on and on. We're too late in time for something like that. Brothers and sisters, uh, Gaza is no doubt going to be cleaned how long it takes, what the story is. And uh, no doubt it's going to set the dimensions to enter into that era of the supernatural. And my brothers and sisters, when Gaza is dealt with, brothers and sisters, and whatever takes place there, then Israel will be set in a position to turn its eyes to what's going to be happening in the West Bank. Because remember, that's the next thing that is firing on the line. And that's where Jerusalem is. If they clean Gaza, what about Jerusalem where West Bank is? 
So that's going to be dealt with as well as we enter into that era of the miraculous. And when that is dealt with, brothers and sisters, remember that will move into that era of the miraculous. Egypt will act like a woman. And my brothers and sisters, once Israel deals with that, it'll turn its eyes to Syria and move to the borders uh, of the Euphrates. Brothers and sisters, that's all in other scriptures. We don't have the time to go into that, but we're just looking at what is happening there in Gaza. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, Israel doesn't have to fear because once that supernatural goes into effect, this is how it happened in olden time when Elisha was in the scene. Brothers, the king of Syria wanted to make war with Israel. And my brothers and sisters, but every time he planned something, somebody went and told uh, the king of Israel what the king of Syria was doing. Actually, Elisha was doing that. And my brothers and sisters, uh, so uh, we see that uh, in Second Kings chapter 6, verse 16, one morning when uh, Elisha and his servant woke up, the servant said there were soldiers around the camp. And uh, he said, Elisha, what, what's going to happen? And it says, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Brothers, as we move into this, I would say what is happening now in Gaza. And as uh, the United Nations, even the United States, and Europe and many other nations are going to start coming against Israel some way in that equation. Brothers and sisters, uh, Michael is no doubt going to be able to get a word from the Lord. Now is the time. And my brothers and sisters, just like Elisha saw, the camps, the mountains were filled with angels. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's going to be the same way in Israel. Brothers and sisters, the world doesn't realize. The Bible says uh, these scenes are going to be act up. My brothers and sisters, thousands and thousands. That is why we have to realize uh, as time goes on, brothers and sisters, they can have all the soldiers. They're no match for God's angelic beings. Fear not, for they that are with us are more than they that are with them. And Elisha prayed. And said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountains were f was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. My brothers and sisters, uh, imagine just as I would say a month before October 7th, what was the state in Israel? There were protests against the government. But what's the state today? The whole nation is unified. But brothers and sisters, the hostages are not back. Time is moving on. And my brothers and sisters, pressure is going to come against Israel. And that is why the army alone, the bombs alone that the United States gives, are not going to flush out the enemy to a state. Some way along this, brothers and sisters, we are going to see the blending in of the supernatural as, I would say, the forces of the world come against Israel. My brothers and sisters, uh, what a marvelous day it was for this young man. One moment he was wondering, what are we going to say? What are we going to do? And my brother suddenly to see, in that hour it was chariots of fire. Horses. But you know, in this hour, my brothers and sisters, it's not going to be horses. It's going to be jet planes, bombers, that God's going to multiply. Brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, the angels can do anything to maneuver themselves on the battlefront. Brothers and sisters, they can see thousands and thousands of soldiers. And remember, the Bible tells us, that for I say the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. 
Brothers, imagine we are seeing the preliminaries of a battle. The supernatural hasn't gone into full effect because there has to come certain conditions and certain players on ground. But once it happens, brothers and sisters, remember in the days of Moses, Pharaoh thought, well, he has a free way through this Red Sea. But suddenly, brothers and sisters, the angel began to come as a blockade of a pillar of fire. And when they say, well, you know, the pillar of fire is just small. We can go that side and we can go through it. No, this, every time you move that side, the pillar of fire is going to grow there and you can't go that way. You're going to try and go on ground. It'll be fire like spreading on ground. Brothers, the world is going to see God do some surprises. I don't even have the illustrations to tell you what it's going to be like. But remember, it is going to be a very spectacular hour for the true children of God. And my brothers and sisters, God is going to blend that supernatural army. They will not know the difference between Israel's army and God's army on the ground. For I declare the Lord will be a wall of fire around them, protecting her from the enemies, and I will be the glory in her midst. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand that the attitude of the international world will have to change from one of saying, well, we understand, Israel, how you felt on October 7th. We understand, you know, all of us will feel the same way. Our babies have been burned. Our wives and our parents have been killed. But not even, I would say, a few weeks pass by. The attitude changes. So we know, brothers and sisters, in order for that supernatural to be enacted, there has to come a time where Israel is left, I would say, isolated. And they will have to come the time where they will know as a people together with the enemies that when that victory comes and Israel does valiantly on the battlefield, it was not the bombs supplied by the United States. It was not the expert expertise of the military of Israel. No, brothers and sisters, uh, it was something they cannot explain and it can only say it was an act of God. Brothers and sisters, so we are watching this situation and we are seeing how Israel is being pushed into that corner. And my brothers and sisters, they're going to have more and more United Nations settings, the votings. And my brothers and sisters, there's one thing that has happened now that has changed the mindset of these generals. Look at Bennett. Look at his talk. Look at some of the politicians. When they talk, brothers and sisters, we realize they've they gone into another mindset. That is how, brothers, David acted on the battlefront. Brothers and sisters, uh, we know that house of Judah is a warrior tribe. But in this end time, it's going to be a combination of the house of Judah to the ten northern tribes. And the Bible says they will fight like Men who have taken wine. And my brothers and sisters, they're not afraid to die. Because they realize their nation, brothers, has been done a bad turn. And my brothers and sisters, so we're going to see more of this. But we, we have many more scriptures to deal with. But we're going to look at the book of Obadiah. It is a one chapter book. And my brothers and sisters, uh, it was written in the 8th century. And my brothers and sisters, Obadiah was looking in time before Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, brothers, under Nebuchadnezzar. And he was seeing how the Edomites, which is actually, brothers, uh, present day generations of time, of what we have, a mix of what the Palestinians are in the world today. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we realized that at that time, last week we talked about, don't forget Amalek. 
He was a grandson of Esau. Obadiah, if you go and read one chapter, underline the number of times Edom is mentioned. That is the land of Esau. And my brothers and sisters, God said, don't forget Amalek, which is the grandson of brothers, I would say Esau. And we have to realize, brothers and sisters, uh, as time went along, my brothers and sisters, there's been a mixture. And as individuals have crossed over Jordan and from uh, other areas around there, they landed, brothers and sisters, into Gaza. It's a present-day modern generation, a mixture. But brothers and sisters, the same spirit that was on the Edomites is the same spirit that is on these individuals. Brothers, you can go and read in Numbers chapter 20. Brothers and sisters, Israel was coming out of Egypt. And Moses, he sent a message to his brethren, Esau, and said, Please, this is what Pharaoh did to us. Now we have our liberation. We just want to pass by alongside your boundary. We won't pluck a fruit. We won't drink any water. Our cattle will not drink. We just want to pass by. Please give us permission. You know what Hisao said? He said, you won't pass us by. And my brothers and sisters, they made the poor Israelites take a journey through a rugged terrain to get to Canaan's land. God did not forget that. Brothers and sisters, sir, I can quote other scriptures, but when Nebuchadnezzar came on the scene and uh, the Israelites were being butchered and killed, some of them were escaping, coming again across the boundary lines of Esau's tribe, the Edomites. They stood on the mountains and they screamed, burn it, pull it down. That means the temple. And they pointed to those soldiers, here are the Jews. Here are the captors. God didn't forget that. Because 200 years before it could happen, he pulled a prophet and he prophesizes the scene and what they do. And my brothers and sisters, and he also states what is going to be the end picture of Esau. So brothers and sisters, the prophet Obadiah the prophet to Edom. That is the area where Esau lived. And my brothers and sisters, last week we said, remember, don't forget Amalek. So, Obadiah chapter 1 verses 10. It says, for thy, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Brothers, this is some 200 years before this Jerusalem is burned down. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives his forces, Obadiah is seeing this in time, and foreigners entered into these gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou was as one of them. A cousin, an half brother, a bro brothers, they should have given them house to, to have stayed. Jerusalem was going to be burnt. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother. In the day that he became a stranger, neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress, and I want to say right here, MBS, Saudi Arabia, the 22 or how many delegates were there? They need to read this. Brothers and sisters, they need to realize that the Jews are not a stranger. They are brothers. Brothers and sisters, the generations of Ishmael, brothers and sisters, uh, and of Keturah's children. But what they are doing, they are becoming talking proudly. Qatar and the rest. Brothers and sisters, at that time Jerusalem was being destroyed. 
And God saw in time what they were doing. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity. No, have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. What are they waiting for, brothers? They're waiting for all the substance, uh, what the Jews have got, they've come back. Because once this era of the miraculous is over, and Israel is dwelling safely, Gog and Magog, what does it say? Russia is going to look for that substance. And my brothers and sisters, but at this moment, that's why they sat themselves so comfortably in Ambius's uh, palace. And brothers and sisters, cease fire. But the same spirit that was on the Edomites at that time is still on them today. And my brothers and sisters, neither, see how many neithers? Should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off tho those of his that did escape, Neither shouldest thou have del delivered up those of his that remained in the days of distress. Brothers, we worry at this moment only what happened on October 7th. God goes back in time. And he had the patience. He could have wiped out Edom a long time ago. But he allowed it to stay to this end time. Brothers, Jerusalem was burned down. But the greatest sin was not only for Nebuchadnezzar. It was for the sons of Keturah and the Ishmaelite and Esau's individuals. The same tribe or the same spirit is upon them. So God leaves that picture even as it progresses forward. Others will be dealt with. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. So not only the Arabs are going to be dealt with in time. All the nations that don't believe in the one true God. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. What an equation. Brothers and sisters, as you did, it's going to be done unto thee. That's not my words. Brothers, God keeps the book. And so we have to realize some of these pictures we don't want to see. Because it affects our psychology as well. We are human beings. But my brothers and sisters, we are too late in time to realize God is going to turn his favor to his wife, Israel. That he had put it away for a while. And woe be to the nation when God is attracting uh, his wife back to himself. You get in the pathway, you're going to have problems. And my brothers and sisters, as it was done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall be returned upon thine own head. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. All that God gave to Israel, she is going to possess. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord had spoken. Remember, it doesn't start on this side of Jordan first. It starts in Gaza. Yes, it doesn't start immediately with a supernatural bang. But as uh, I've stated, as Brother Jackson has stated there's going to be a massacre that is going to be the catalyst to change the mindset of the Jews, the military. And as they go in, they're going to lock up Gaza. They're, in their mind is, we're going to deal with Hamas. And that's what they're saying. But as they go on, they don't know how events are going to change. And my brothers and sisters, where I would have to say, the other individuals will have to come into the picture. And my brothers and sisters, that's, in, that's when we will see how God will allow Michael to stand up and the supernatural will go into effect. But once it goes into effect, we see the finishing picture. 
and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau. So brothers, this area across Jordan and even all the people that have come out from Jordan and went and fell into Gaza, brothers, the Bible tells us Israel is going to possess Mount of Esau. And they of the plain of the Philistines, that is Gaza, brothers, and they shall possess the field of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, that's the West Bank, and uh, Benjamin shall possess Gilead, that's across Jordan. Brothers, all this is going to happen in our day. And the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites. Even unto Zanapheth, you take an atlas and take a map that's going into the border of Lebanon. Brothers and sisters, so Isbala doesn't want to say nothing at the moment. Say, no, no, we're not going to start anything. But brothers and sisters, you can be rest assured. When you're going to get the United Nations, you're going to get Blinken, you're going to get the USA, start changing the attitudes. Israel is going to be pushed into a corner. When that miraculous, I would say, descends, Israel is not going to fight for months and months. Brothers, that angel doesn't need all the time. Brothers and sisters, they're going to go methodically, precisely, and the world is going to stand in awe when it's done. Israel would have extended the boundary lines, across Jordan, to Ephrates, to Lebanon, to Egypt. Brothers and sisters, uh, and I will say, what God has spoken here, yeah, how you think those Jews are going to read the Torah? Brothers, they're going to be jumping on the streets of Israel, carrying those Torahs around. And my brothers and sisters pointing the scriptures that the prophets have spoken about. And then we see it goes uh, into the millennium. It says, uh, And saviors shall come upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. In other words, out of this generation, there are going to come some Arabs that are going to see, brothers and sisters, the spectacular de demonstration of the Lord. No, some of the young people, together with Gentile young people, are going to be the ones that are going to be taken into the millennium. They are going to be the ones to repopulate. And my brothers, when the Bible says they're saviors, look at the word here. It's not a savior, singular. It says saviors. That is, the 12 tribes or the 12 apostles judging the 12 tribes of Israel in the time of the millennium. Saviors shall come upon Mount Zion from Jerusalem to judge even this mortal realm that would go into the millennium. And some of the generations, the younger generation of Esau's tribes will be taken in. Because all nations are going to be taken in. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Esau's kingdom will be flattened. And everyone will have to go to Jerusalem to worship the king. So brothers and sisters, at this moment, you got the mountain of Esau. All of these offsprings and descendants, they are the one that has moved out, went into Gaza and other areas. And they also want this Mount Zion. Brothers and sisters, but by the time it's over, Mount Zion is going to be lifted. There's not going to be a Mount Esau or a kingdom of Esau. Brothers and sisters, uh, there's going to be the kingdom of the Lord alone. So we realize we're moving into the time. So we go to this scripture here that we've read a few times. Because you're going to see more gathering of the United Nations. They're going to come against Israel. It says, gather yourselves together. See the word yourselves means the nations of the world. You gather together a nation or desire or shameless nations. Brothers, the Arabs together with the world should be ashamed of themselves of what they did to six million Jews in the gas chambers. Brothers, they denied up till today because on October 7th, they quickly remembered what happened. But a month from then, they all hold a summit. We must stop the fire. 
Brothers and sisters, hospitals are closing down. Babies are dying. Again, I want to say, it has the same effect on us. Immaterial tools being dealt with. But brothers and sisters, if we have to close the Bible, we will act according to the world, according to the United Nations, because they feel the God the same. But remember, brothers, how God had patience over the years when the Jews were scattered, called outcasts, trampled. Brothers and sisters never had a name. God was the one who was bringing them back. And my brothers, they were prepared. PLO could stay in Gaza. And what did they do? They made that, brothers and sisters, another terrorist state. Therefore, they're not going to open the West Bank. Because, brothers and sisters, that's what they want. So we realize, brothers and sisters, the nations are going to sit. Joe Biden is going to come against great pressure because his election is coming shortly. They're going to squeeze this, they already said. And they're putting the envious note. China and Russia are better suited, my brothers and sisters, to deal with the Middle East because they know what is going on, the West don't know how to deal with Middle East situations. Joe Biden is going to be scratching his head and saying, well, you know what? I want the, the, the petrol dollars. I want uh, the Middle East uh, to be on our side. And my brothers, the only way he can do something is to throw Israel under the bus. Brothers and sisters, uh, tell Israel, stop it now. If you don't stop it, we're not going to give you the bombs. We're not going to give you the military might. And my brothers, anointing is going to hit some of those governors. That is why the Bible says, when the governors say that Jews must inhabit Jerusalem, then the Lord will be their strength. Brothers and sisters, their mindset will have to change. They cannot go with this. No, we'll have some Arabs in there and we'll be a mixed crowd and everything will go on. They've got to change their mindset. And God set the tone. And my brothers and sisters, this massacre, which was terrible, shouldn't have happened. But what did God want to prove? Israel, you have the best Mossad in the world. The best intelligence. They know everything that will happen before time. They have one of the best armies. And my brothers and sisters, uh, they had everything best as such. But on October 7th, you know what was the minister of intelligence or one of those guys when he was phoned and told what was taking place? He said, no, this couldn't be happening. And he went back to sleep. Now my brothers and sisters, God no doubt created a condition. And my brothers and sisters, or they created a condition for God to act in front of us. And my brothers and sisters, that is why the Bible tells us these nations are really shameless. The United Nations... All these other nations that are gathered together, before the decree bring forth, before the day passes chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of Israel's anger, no, it says the Lord's anger come upon you. Brothers and sisters, uh, this has been uh, preached many, many years now. And my brothers and sisters, now we're seeing the climax of it. And my brothers and sisters, uh, therefore, nobody can be able to put water on what has happened as a start of a fire. But it's going to gain climax and momentum. And my brothers and sisters, we see that God says, we might as well seek his face. For Gaza shall be forsaken and Ashkelon a des desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Brothers, at the moment, Israel's army, 
Gaza is now divided into two, and you know what's going on. Brothers and sisters, the upper part here is where the war is taking place. They have opened a corridor for them to come here. This is what Egypt supposed to have done, opened the Rafa crossing. But brothers, they didn't do that. And therefore we're seeing all of these things happening in this area. But they, they are jumping the gun. They're saying, Israel, well, after this war, we'll tell you what you must do. You must give this area to the PLO. It was given to the PLO. And my brothers and sisters uh, and uh, Israel have nothing to do with this. Israel doesn't actually want this place. But what does the Bible tell us? My brothers and sisters, Israel for the moment has locked up Gaza. And almost 10 or 20% of the buildings are devastated. God only knows what is going to be as it goes on. My brothers and sisters, and as yet, we know a purpose in going there hasn't been fully accomplished. Woe unto the inhabitants of the Sea of Coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines, that's Gaza. I will even destroy thee that there shall be no inhabitants. It doesn't mean that there will, there's going to be no uh, Gaza people there. It means uh, it will not be able to govern again from a point of having some two million people there anymore and a leadership. No, because God's mind is not for the PLO to govern this area. It says there very clearly, and the coast, that is that Gaza Strip, shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Not Esau or brothers, any other people. For the remnant of the house of Judah, what shall they do? They shall feed thereupon in the house of Escalon, shall they lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. God is going to visit them. Brothers, there's going to be hundreds of hundreds of Jewish shepherds. They're not going to be worried about the buildings that have been broken down and bombed. They're going to come in with their herds and their sheep because you know it's going to be big business when after this, the temple is going to be built and they'll need a lot of sheep. And my brothers and sisters, uh, this husbandry business is going to be big for that moment of time. My brothers and sisters, that is why I have to say, if they're dealing with Gaza, don't think it's going to stop there. This place is going to erupt, which is the West Bank. Because the PLO is there and say, we want this both places. And my brothers, Jerusalem is going to be once again negotiated and fight it for. This, what is going on there, brothers, could have been contained. They could have opened this Rafa, I'll say corridor. Yeah. Israel wanted that to happen. This is a big area where tents could have been put in. And these people could have went in there, stayed in there, let Israel finish off the Hamas. And they could have came back. That Israel would have done that. But brothers and sisters, the scriptures don't talk that way. So even if the governors want it that way, it's not going to happen. And they're not going to see the full strength of God until their mindset is fully changed. When the governors of Israel shall say that Jerusalem must be inhabited with Jews, that that's the east part as well, then that anointing is going to fall and they're going to see God's strength. Don't push that to the next five and ten years. That is why the world is locked. 
And Israel has locked up Gaza. In their mind, we're going to clear up Hamas. But brothers and sisters, in God's mind, Hamas is, is not the only enemy or the place. God is going to extend the boundary lines east, west, south, north. Because remember, brothers, what's the next focus? The focus is not only territorial land. It's a temple needs to be built in Israel. And if you turn and parallel all that to the bride of Christ, we're not here just with political talk. Brothers and sisters, uh, the bride will also have to fit together and be compacted together with a similar picture. In the past years, they've said, no era of the miraculous. I wonder if that line of thought is being changed now. Because brothers and sisters, uh, that's just in front of us. And it's a joy, Brother Jackson said, uh, this will create the enthusiasm to the bride of Christ. And so the catalyst has been done. The massacre that has taken place, brothers, will not change the military or the government or the citizens of Israel. How this will change and set the stepping stones, brothers, for God to do the rest. We are watching that picture. And we are so thankful to be living at this hour of time. So the bride of Christ will also have to see herself, brothers and sisters, for years. The ministry and the body of Christ has talked about this picture. People said, oh, it's a fairy tale story. When will it happen? Now, brothers and sisters, uh, they're looking, they're wondering, no, United Nations, do something. Uh, brothers, Qatar, do something. Uh, they, with all their money, are not going to be able to do nothing in a while. Brothers, the scene is going to be changing. And it's going to be a fast-changing landscape. And we thank God for the era that we live in. No, we let God move the chess pieces on his prophetic chess board the way he wants it. And we know the scriptures are changing. And we are a thankful people to be living at this hour of time. May the Lord bless you this morning. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can be living at this hour of time. I pray that you'll bless your people all across the lands. Take these words. You paint the picture, my God. I pray for the army of Israel, for the hostages, and I pray also for the, all the innocent lives that are losing, Lord, loved ones. Lord, I pray that they will turn to you in some way that Lord a younger generation may be left behind to enter into that millennium Lord we commit all things into your hands this morning and we ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and Amen Amen may the Lord bless you this morning
the pop. 